there are some lies in our science books. I taught it for 15 years. Even though I'm not teaching it anymore, I still like to study. It's so many neat things to learn. And we're going to cover some of that tonight. Perception is being managed. We are being steered and guided by a hidden hand. The whole world has been duped by the media that is not real. <laughs> smart thinking, possible time traveler, smart thinking. That night, boom, contact memory. And then, do, Alex, if you don't agree, you'll be sent to a re-education camp. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I've lost my touch with the ladies. You know why? Now, experts are suggesting that we're in a golden age of shape-shifting reptilian sightings. Now, why is that? I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research. It was most definitely not capable of melting steel. Then I would be a crackpot if I thought that was that was the. Welcome to the Hypothetical that Institute, a podcast Ooh. about conspiracies. My name is Luke. I'm Salty. I'm Cam. Do you forget what you're doing, there, Salty? <laughs> no, you know what? That was really weird because in my head, I think yesterday, I don't know why, but yesterday I was thinking to myself. No, I do remember now, because when I was downstairs getting a coffee the other day, mm. it's a great story, by the way. Yeah, I was getting coffee, and the guy at the coffee place was like, "Oh." What's your name, man? Like, because he serves me all the time. Mm. I said, I. I said, my name's Andrew. And he goes, okay, cool. I said, everyone calls me Salty if that's easy to remember. And he goes, oh, I'll call you Salty then, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, when I was leaving, he goes, see, Andrew. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> the fuck? Anyway, then I was like. Mr. Piccolo, you like, idiot. And then like, I, my friends call me Salty. Okay, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, felt a bit like that. But then I was like, later on, I was thinking about it. And I was trying to remember whether on the podcast I said, I'm Andrew or I'm Salty. Mm. And just when I heard you talk, I was looking something up on my phone and I was remembering thinking that in my head. And then when it comes to talk, I was like, it's frozen. Oh, no. Forgot what your bloody name was. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Ahmed. Ahmed. Mr. Yeah. Piccolo? No. Different it's a different name. place. No, no, I'm Mr. Piccolo, but it's okay. not Mr. Piccolo. He's not the Mr. Piccolo. No, no. My dad was Mr. Piccolo. You can just call me Ahmed. What are we talking about? Uh, today we are going to be talking. <laughs> okay, right, and, yeah. and he's Cam. Did you say that? Yeah, I'm yeah. Cam. By the way. Oh, okay. I thought we'd done. I, I thought we'd done it. All right. I think we had. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> today we are talking about two things. You know who we are. Yeah. Y2K. Yep. The year 2000, the millennium bug. 20 years ago. Ridiculous to be talking about it now, but here we are. Well, there was a lot of discussion about it at the start of the year. Yeah. Because it was the 20th anniversary. And there was a, some conspiracy theories. But also there were some up. computers that were just, they just pushed it back to 2020. Yeah. And then they're like, mm. oh yeah, we'll worry about that in 20 years. We'll talk about I that. still won't be in this job. And uh, we're also going to be talking a little bit about uh, Gippsland and hey. the dark and the things that lurk in the dark there. Hmm. A little Gippsland update. Yeah. Uh, I guess we should remember that uh, parts of East Gippsland have been and are still affected by bushfire. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully the big cats are okay. Yeah. We'll talk about them later. And all the people, Robo. And all the people. Yeah, don't course. worry about them. Ooh. Wait, no, 2020, the year of not cancelling you, mate. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, you can read my article on the incredible uh, impact of bushfires on the people of Australia if you want to see that I care, Cam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's talk about Y2K. Goodbeerhunting.com. Yep. <clears throat> so, at the start of the year, there was heaps of Y2K shit. Yeah. it was like 20 years on. Yeah. And there was so many, there was like... I think some th thought leader, that Pesh guy, Mark Pesh, is mm. that his name? Not sure. It's like a futurist. Okay. Not much of a futurist if like you look talking about stuff from 20 years ago, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. Let's stick to 20 years ahead. Yeah. Uh, but he posted something about uh, uh, what a dud that was. Mm. Everyone jumped in. And it felt to me like a, that sort of started a little discussion in Australia, but then there was just so much... 20 year on stuff all over the world, I found. Yeah, so he, he said it was a dud, and all the programmers were like, actually, uh, actually, we did a lot of hard work. Yeah, yeah, we worked really hard and we stayed up late. And then I saw some of them are saying that the other ones that did lazy fixes are just like, yeah, there was not much to it. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't actually that hard. <laughs> um, 
<clears throat> I did find some actual impacts. We want to talk about the what actually happened at Y2K. Right, so in 2000. Yeah. yeah. Well, should we just say what the Y2K bug was? Let's do it. Yeah, because there is a chance that there is quite... We have listeners who are... Gen Z. Yeah, potentially mm. born after mm. in the 2000s. They've been born in a world me out. where there was enough memory to have four digits instead of two digits yep. mm. for all your dates. <laughs> They're like... What are you even talking about, old man? Yeah. Oh, is this like putting a pen inside a tape? Another, another one of those bullshit things you make up? <laughs> I, I saw, speaking of that, you know how people say that the save <clears throat> icon is a disc and like, kids aren't going to know what that is? Yeah. I saw a, a lady on Twitter who said she had a, a dress that was had the save icon or floppy disk icon all over it in a pattern. She's like, I was wearing this dress and a kid came up to me and was like, why do you have the save icon on your dress? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, that did not happen. Yeah, no, one, <laughs> no one goes up to people and go, oh, why do you have the save icon? Like, that's just not a thing that people do. But also, you can't be wearing a dress with the, the save icon on it and someone says, oh, that's, you've got the save icon on your dress. You're like, no, actually, it's a picture of a floppy disk. Yeah. It's the same thing. It yeah. is, yeah. That's what it and is. I, just, I, I really wanted to reply. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to. Let, let the baby have its bottle. 2020, you're <laughs> wanting the baby have its bottle. Uh, so back in the day when they <clears throat> come up with computers, they're like, oh, we've only got so much memory. Mm. Just chuck another, plug a bloody USB hard drive in is what I'd say to them. <laughs> yeah, so they then they kind of figured that by the year 2000, we're going to have flying cars, we're going to have holograms. This, this yeah. We're not going to be using this room-sized computer anymore. Yeah. This tiny room size computer. It's <laughs> yeah. got no yeah. memory in it. And it turns out that no one, re- like the first computing systems never really got updated. Well, yeah. early computing systems never got updated for like major electricity grids. I'm pretty sure like Metro Trains here in Melbourne um, is still run on like tapes basically. Like yeah. Really old school shit. Um, so the, the point the point is to save space because yeah. they were dealing with very small amounts of memory for every date that was like 1971. They just took the 71. They dropped the 19. Yeah. yeah. And the problem is when this actually does feel like everyone would know this, but the problem is when it, it comes to the year 2000, uh, it goes 1999, it goes 99, then it goes back to zero zero, and they're like, are all the computers going to think it's 1900? Mm. And yeah, to that, that's. What they would think. One of the things that I still don't really understand is everyone said missiles are going to blast off. Yeah. All the missile systems are going to blast <laughs> off <laughs> because of a glitch. And like, while I know we are kind of talking about lazy or, or archaic design impacting, causing problems, I feel like the problems that that would cause wouldn't just be like, all right. Yeah. Like, well, what, what's the system at play that's just like, oh, shit, fail, let's just shoot the rockets then. <laughs> so, yeah, as long as the computers are running, <laughs> yeah. the launches won't go off. Yeah. So I think the rocket one was <laughs> like, that was the worst case scenario, that n- nukes would get sent. Yeah. And I think that was be- maybe based on, we had all of these, like, dead man switches and things. Mm. You know, the Russians had them for, like, if the US launched a strike and it cut off communications between so-and-so and so-and-so mm. send the nukes. And, the you know, the Yanks had the same thing. The Brits had the same thing. Uh, I guess the idea was that there might be computers that are like, all right, if I haven't heard from this thing in, you know, this amount of time, mm. fire off a nuke. Mm. And then it's like, well, if the clock ticks over to 100 years ago, it's going to really throw that out. And it's going to be like, all right, fire mm. them off. Someone's fucking with our communication. Yeah, I haven't heard from these things. Yeah, I don't think you'd design the system that way, would you? And if you did design the system that way, I certainly wouldn't say to the media, oh, shit, hey, by the way, come the year 2000, <laughs> we designed the system this way and it's going to fire off. I guess people theorise that's how they might have done it. Well, I mean, part of we know that part of the way it might have worked is with some of those number stations mm. you know, where they think that, uh, like, if whoever was tuning into those didn't hear the right numbers, they're like, oh, let's go. Yeah. Mm. I mean, the UK... We, we've talked about this before, but one of the things the UK had was, uh, you know, every now and then their nuclear subs, are, like the nuclear missile subs would come up for air, yeah. tune into the BBC, and if it wasn't broadcasting, they'd be like, oh, open up the box that says what to do. Mm. Was this our theory or was this a movie? That's a, No, that's a, real, <laughs> that's, a real, that's a real thing. My proposed, <coughs> yeah. my proposed sitcom was that the Russians <laughs> destroy London 
yeah. then they have to put on a pirate radio station yeah. of the BBC to trick the Brits into not retaliating. Welcome really back idea. to the BBC. That was Oasis. <laughs> But, I mean, some of the less drastic things were, like, even if the banks... I think I don't know if anyone thought it was going to shut everything down forever, mm. but it might have fucked things up for a few weeks. Yeah, or well, people's money disappeared. There's going to be no records of it. Mm. Yeah. I'm assuming banks had a backup. The- it's 1900 again. What was What's the balance supposed to be of everyone's accounts? Oh, this person's not born yet. Well, let's just dump all their money. I did. I did see. Weirdly, the Rothschilds still. still <laughs> <laughs> I saw a thing. It was from like 1999. Like a Forbes. dot com chat mm. that they'd done with like a Forbes writer talking about conspiracy theories, and he did say it's like, oh, you know, it's probably going to be fine, but maybe just keep like paper records of your bank accounts. <laughs> so I think like there was the worst case scenario for the banks is you know they lose everyone's. Money, we're back to year zero. Mm. And then the Pixies start playing. Mm. But I think like the sort of... Fight club. Medium range or like lower range thing that actually freaked out governments is the idea that the banks would like get knocked out for a couple of days, but that would cause a run on the banks. Mm. And a run on the banks is not ideal. And Mm. then that would cause civil unrest. Mm. I also saw the idea that like, you know, if social security systems sort of crash and, you know, then people are not getting money that they need for food for a little bit, then that's going to cause civil unrest and it's then going to have wider repercussions. And that was sort of a realistic mm. proposition. As we know in 2020, if you just cut people's social securities back to below the poverty line, they don't riot anyway. So you'd probably be okay. Yeah, that would be fine. <laughs> yeah. um, so there were a couple of minor bank glitches. Um, I don't think anything that actually impacted anyone's money. Mm. Uh, Internet Explorer had some problems apparently where it was showing like 19100 right. on some versions. Um, and a video renter, this is the kind of the biggest one. That's just because they're like, all right, so once it gets to 99, go to 100. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, all right, we've got to fix this. Put a 19 on the front of all the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some video renter got a $90,000 bill. Right. Because it thought he had, his overdue was so late. <laughs> um, which is interesting that it was only... I, now I read it out and think about it, that sounds like an urban myth because are we to assume he was the only person to have a late video from that video store at the time? Mm. Mm. The year 2000, everyone had a late video at some point. Yeah. I reckon a, a video store, even a modest one, 10, 20 late videos at any one time. Yeah. Don't buy that one. Did you read about the stuff that happened in the late 80s that kind of triggered everyone off that something weird was going to happen. No, what happened? So there was a woman, I think in the U S who got a letter from a kindergarten saying, Hey, or a letter come to her house saying, Hey, we're, you know, wondering if your daughter would like to come and check out this kindergarten. Cause she's getting to the age where she should be going to kindergarten. She's four, mm. but she was 104. Right. So she was born in like 1888. And in 82 or whatever, whatever it was, it had to be 84, mm. the electoral records or whatever showed her up as a two-year-old because her date, her birth, that birth date was 88 mm. or 82 or whatever it was. So they're like, oh, there's a four-year-old. But because there was no... So she um, got an invite to a kindergarten because it thought she was that old. Mm. There was another one as well, but I can't remember what it was. An elderly person, kindergarten... It's probably pretty good for them. Maybe. Wow. Well, you know, there's that uh, five-year-olds hanging out with 80-year-olds TV yeah. show on ABC. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's really fulfilling for both parties. This is like an early version of that. Yeah. You actually make the 80-year-old do kindergarten. Go to kindergarten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she has to pass. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't take over <laughs> dad's company. Yeah. There was another one as well, but I can't remember what it was. Cool. Uh, Billy Madison. Yes. Thank you. Are you just going to call out what the references are? Is this your new thing for 2020? <laughs> Maybe. I'm trying it out. It's getting laughs. Um, so w- our good friend, Alex Jones, mm-hmm. was broadcasting live at the time. Yes. Right. And I, I might read out. I'll see how far I get. Was in 2020 going into? No, 2000. 19. Yeah, 19. Yeah, going yeah, into. Yeah. Was he as cooked then as he is now? 
Uh, in a very different way. I'll, I'll let you decide. Okay. Uh, cash machines are failing in Britain. This is a quote. Cash machines are failing in Britain and now other European countries. They're finding large amounts of explosives in France. Vladimir Putin, who is known as Vladimir the Ruthless, bet he's changed his tune on that one these days, uh, using all his profanity on national TV, you name it. We won't read the profanity here, but we've got it. This person is unbelievable on an unbelievable power trip and resembles a demon. He is a creature of the IMF and the World Bank and international communism. He is a former KGB head, and this information is vital, ladies and gentlemen. He didn't really say what information mm. he's giving. Anyway, <coughs> uh, we're seeing the New World Order really come out in full force. More wars than have been in the past 50 years are going on right now. The war in Chechnya, Chechnya is raging in Rosny, with reports of hundreds of thousands dying. Twenty to 40,000 civilians are trapped in the city. Russian hinds are being shot down. Russian hinds? Anyway. R- tanks are being blown to bits. Uh, unguided rocket attacks are being launched from the city indiscriminately right now. <laughs> uh, I, I'll give you the news first on Y2K. The newest developments. A Pennsylvania nuclear plant has been shut down. Uh, side note, that kind of did happen. It's just kind of a routine right. cycling of power. Uh, and it came online like an hour later. Uh, one of the main systems transferring the power from it failed, but they say it's not Y2K problem. And the things happening here in Austin, Texas, the shelves are empty, water, water of water. Some gas stations are running out of fuel. Here in central Texas, Minneapolis, Minnesota, the short wave is basically down, ladies and gentlemen. It went off right as I went on the air. Uh, occupation and government in Washington, D.C. has set up a large $50 million command bunker hooked up into all the FEMA boxes that can take over the broadcast. Police are on military high alert running around looking for boogeymen and terrorists under every rock. Military are highly <laughs> visible right now. There are trains of military equipment moving into Austin. There you go. Uh, I did another great Austin takeover of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of 2000. 2000. I, did, I did cut out a few bits there. Um, but, yeah, he was basically saying, it's all happening. Right. I know. Missiles are flying. <clears throat> None of it Nothing. was happening. Um, still on air today, wielding more influence. Some shit did go down on the 1st of January, though. There was, a, like, an Al-Qaeda plot mm. that it was shut down, but apparently they were going to, like... There was an attempt to bomb LAX. Okay. Right. And they also suspected that maybe they were going to bomb Disneyland, mm. which would not have, not have been very cool, Al-Qaeda, just saying. When you were a kid... You might ask me this the other night. Yeah. Uh, when you were a kid, did you ever really want to go to Disneyland? Not that I can remember. When I was a little kid... Hmm. Yeah, a little bit. I went to Disneyland when I was a kid. I think my answer was, was cool. I, I don't think I did, but I yeah. feel like I should want to go. Yeah. Was it good? Yeah, it was fun. Hmm. Hmm. So it was a different time. Yeah. My parents just let me and uh, my sibling go off on our own. We got completely lost. Yeah. That's fun. Very different time. Um. All right. Sorry. Sidetrack there. Yeah. Uh. So, no. Uh. Not nine eleven. Why two K. So none of that happened. Mm. Yeah. Do you guys remember it? Yeah. I, um, what did you do? What were you doing? We were drinking uh, oh, yeah. a few different places. How and then were we, you in Y2K? 17. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot you're old. And then we took a, a keg down to the beach uh, uh, to watch the sunrise. It was a miserable grey day. <laughs> there was no sun. <laughs> we stood in the rain for a bit. And then we went into town at sort of daylight and I had a really good potato top pie at the Doodukin Cafe. Cool. And while I was eating that potato top pie, uh, there was a, a big Māori guy on the uh, road trying to yell at trucks and trying to fight all the trucks or any trucks that came <laughs> past. Yeah. And we're like, who's this bloke? And then my friend Danny was like, oh, it's my uncle. <laughs> oh, Russ. So he had to go out and try and get his uncle <laughs> off the street. Well, Russ, you're not a bloody Optimus Prime. Yeah. Um, there was a similar bloke in Footscray the other morning, but he was like playing footy in the intersection okay. with cars. Right. How'd that go? Oh, uh, you know, he was loud. He, when they come near him, he kind of got away from them. Yeah. But he was like, handball, handball. Like, ah, um, yeah, footy. Go, man. Big this Russ. About like five in the morning. Big Russ also got stabbed once. Right. Uh, and didn't know. Uh, until the next day. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, he also once gave Emma uh, a big bag of weed when we were in, in Westport in the what pub. A good um, we're having a cigarette outside. And yeah. I was like, oh, hey, hey, Russ. He was like, oh, hey. And he just pulled out this giant bag of weed and handed it to Emma. And Emma was like, thanks. I don't 
really need an ounce oh, of weed right now. It's much weed. Anyway, that's my Y2K. What was yours, Salty? I just was at home. No, I just I, like I hate going out on New Year's Eve, so mm. I was just at home and it clicked over and I went, oh, yeah, cool. Mm. Nothing happened. Is it? Camo? I don't remember. I think I might have been in the city with my, you know, I was uh, at the whim of my parents because mm. I'm much younger than both of you, apparently. Much younger. Significantly younger. Mm, okay. Uh, baby face over there. Yeah, well. So I think that we went into the city and just watched the fireworks. That was a little dangerous. What if there'd been civil unrest? Yeah. But again, as I've explained just a few minutes ago, my parents were very irresponsible. <laughs> it was a different time. T- taking you into the city to watch a nice fireworks display, irresponsible. When there could have been chaos. Oh. I think we've established there wasn't going to be, though. So, But there might have been. That's the thing. And the government thought there were going to be. So the the thing is, that at the start of the year, there's all of this looking back. And they're like, oh, what a waste of money. I saw a, there was a big thing on um, the ABC where they did get, like, some sceptic guy on to talk about how it was, like, a bit of a scam by the tech companies. Mm. Uh, to get people to buy new computers. Well, they, they weren't really... To, to pay for people to right. come and update. Yeah. Which, <clears throat> there was a little bit of scamming going on. I saw that the US overspent by 30% mm. on their Y2K compliance stuff, uh, which... And the scheme of the US government isn't really that bad. Yeah. But, they I mean, they were, were spending billions of dollars on this. Yeah. And I also... But then I also saw the someone comparing that to like the Russians, who um, only spent like a, a sort of minuscule amount of money compared to the Americans on it. They spent like ten percent of what the Americans spent on fixing it, mm. and it was sort of presented like one of those, you know, the thing with the 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 pens. You know, remember the pens in that space? Russia just came up with a pencil. Yeah, the, yeah. the Americans are like, oh, we've designed a pen that can, you know, we've spent a billion dollars on a pen that can write in space. It writes upside down mm. and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Fisher space pen. Mm. Yeah. And then the, uh, the Russians are like, we just used a pencil. Which isn't true. No, it's not true. And also, if you used a pencil in space, your rocket would probably explode because all, all the little bits of... Particulate. Particulate, yeah, would get yeah. into the controls. Yeah. Would it explode or it would just be bad? I guess the end result of something bad on a, in a rocket in space is explosion. Yeah. yeah. It would might cause a domino effect. Yeah. Although maybe like the graphite dust would just get in and lubricate all the knobs and sliders, and they'd just work more efficiently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, well, our efficiency's gone up yeah. by ten percent. But anyway, Look how smooth this knob is now. Which why Russia got to the moon before America. <laughs> <laughs> but it really was one of those things because the Russians spent significantly less on fixing this, and the reason for that was because all of their sort of cr- critical systems that needed these updates, they're like, let's just turn all the clocks back to nineteen seventy. <laughs> <laughs> like the Americans are like busy updating every bit of code that references a date, mm. and they're like, "Just turn the clock back on the computer, get some uh, what's that fucking game? Cut this Tetris. Nah, what's the one with the Tetris? Like you know the Jenga, the, the, the crystals. It's a phone game. Bejeweled, similar Candy Crush. Candy Crush. Right. Cut this, Doctor Mario. We oh we got no, it. We got, got it. it. We got Cut. It. It's like, oh, I'm going to get Boggle. Some... Piggle. Is it Piggle? Stop talking. Oh, we've we got to, it. We've got, got to cut more. Okay, sorry. You have to cut more now. <laughs> cut. Don't say cut after I clap. It's like getting extra Candy Crush lives or something. They've just changed the clock around. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you do it in Candy Crush? That's a lot of how I'm not a Candy Crush addict, but if you were, that's a, that's a little trick you can use. Uh, Is it Is it actually? Yeah, I'm think asking so. for a friend. You know how like uh, it says you've got to wait like so much time. I yeah. mean, if you just change your clock, it's like, oh, okay. Well done on waiting. Holy um, shit. A friend of mine was like top five in the global Candy Crush leaderboard for a while. Wow. Really? Yeah. How high were they? Was this friend salty? Top five. Like you said. No. I, I mean, mean like as in no, no, I mean, what, high. What level were they on? Like a million? Oh, I, I have no concept of Candy Crush levels. Okay. Maybe 30, maybe 600. I have no idea. I'm up to like nearly 1,500. On Candy Crush? <laughs> Where does that put you in the global ranking? I have no idea. Hmm. I'll find out. I'll find out where they got to. But I think there's over like 7,000 levels or something. Yeah, yeah. And they keep adding new ones. Hmm. So one of the sort of conspiracy theories at the time was that, uh, and this is, I think, 
based partly on fact was that the Americans didn't have enough programmers to update everything. Right. So they, they sort of ended up shipping a lot of it off to India mm. to do. And there was concerns that uh, shipping all of that data offshore was opening it up to, you know, people put it in back doors and things like that. Mm. Which probably happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're concerned that they would find the back doors that were already in there. Well, <laughs> <they're not even> <laughs> <laughs> um, do we want to get into some cook stuff? Yeah. So uh, I was listening to the Mind Shock podcast. Yes. Uh, I, which I hadn't come across before. Are you familiar with it, Cam? I listened to this bit of podcast. Just so, like, did they put like a weird squeaky effect on the voice? Was that just for the, this video or did, do you reckon uh, they do that the whole time? I can't remember. I watched it a week ago. So the squeak isn't in my mind. Um, it's like one of the hosts, they put an effect on his, his voice. So he's like, yeah, let me ask you. Do, do you uh, think that the government... No, very electronic though. Yeah. Um, so there, they at one point they said oh, they, there was a conspiracy that was covered up. Right. Um, someone said there was certain servers running on Y two K. I was like, well, I feel like that's not how servers work for a start. What do you mean? They don't run on Y two K. Y two K is not a platform. I think they just mis- right. I think they just misspoke. Um, <laughs> but they said the DOJ has a has a special version of Windows, Apple's, and the government is hev- heavily involved in Linux. That doesn't mean anything. Mm. Like, the, A, the government having a special version of Windows. I mean, I guess, but probably not. And then saying they're heavily involved in... Like, what? What, what does this mean? What do you mean by these words? Well, I think you... They might have said the DOD rather than the DOJ. Uh, I wrote down DOJ. Then uh, they decided it was a simulation. Everything exploded, um, and this is just a bug. And where, where we are now is just a bug. And the person replied, "It's very possible." Yeah, bearing in mind this person was being presented as like a government agent who'd been working yep. for the government mm. right. at the time of Y two K, but they never <laughs> explained like what sort of person they were. They're just like someone from the V government. Yeah, you yep. know the government. Certainly not someone that works in the post office, so yeah. don't, don't go looking into it. <laughs> um, yeah, so their theory is that, that basically we're in a simulation. Yeah. And that's a pretty strong theory where it's come up a few times. Because the main simulation crashed on Y2K. 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 Because whoever built the simulation is running it on the same servers that we built in the 70s yeah. somehow. Um, then there was some uh, glitch in the matrix kind of stuff um, where basically... Since Y2K happened, with two timelines split off, we're in the bad one. One person suggested everything bad that's happened happened because of Y2K. Right. Y2K happened, then it was 9-11, and just the society's just been going downhill from here. This is on Reddit. Uh, and the first comment's like, there's bad things have been happening for many, many years. Yeah. <laughs> well, before it's not just yeah. like many wars and like actually the, the world's in a much better place than it ever has been uh, if we ignore global warming. In 2000, we were. Um, and then someone suggests again, yeah, glitch in the matrix um, and the, the reality is slowly fading away, which is why the sun's no longer as bright. Um, I don't know. We're not seeing as many stars. All those theories. Right. All because of Y2K just <laughs> jagged everything. Yeah. Not because cities are getting bigger and brighter and light pollution's massive. No. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Um, Bernstein beers. Everyone started not- noticing that after Y2K. <clears throat> Uh, That's when Mandela effect started. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that tie, I guess that ties into the glitch in the matrix kind of thing or the, the uh, alternate timeline splitting off, right? Yeah. In this bad timeline, they're called the Berenstein bears and Mandela has been dead or was dead for years. Yeah. And that all, it all happened on Y2K. Mm. Uh, yeah. That's all I really got. I got a little bit about ancient Egypt. Well, not ancient Egypt, just um, regular Egypt. <laughs> and which, which in itself is ancient in the sense it's been around for a long time. Yeah, well, it's all pyramid related. Mm. Yeah. So there was... Uh, That's the ancient bit. Mm. I found uh, this thing that was put together by a guy called Michael Barra, who is apparently has appeared on uh, that Ancient Aliens show yep. a little bit. He's sort of... In that sort of vein, and a guy also called Richard Hoagland, who was like, I think he was an actual, not an astronomer, but like he uh, he worked at a 
what do you whatever you call those things where they have a, the big the big telescope? Yeah, the opposite microscope observatory. The observatory. Yeah, he worked in some sort of observatory. Uh, he seemed to be sort of normal for a while, and then I think he got cooked on the face on Mars. Mm. Oh. Which it's cooked a few people. Yeah. And then he's, but it, he's proceeded to get more cooked. He's come up with his own physics system, etc. That's pretty cool. And uh, he, I found this old website of his called, uh, it's called the Enterprise Mission, uh, which I think is partially based on his one big success. The name is, I think, he uh, started a letter writing campaign to the president to get the, they were going to call their first space shuttle some shithouse name. Mm. Space him space face. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Rocket McRocket face? Yeah. <laughs> and he started a letter writing campaign because he was a big Trekkie mm. to call it Enterprise. Star Trek. No, to call it, yes, that's right, <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> he started a letter writing campaign to call it Enterprise and that was successful. Right. And so the name of his weird thing is the Enterprise Mission. Now, this website that I was looking at is from the year 2000 mm. and it's gone now. I am, um, I. I had to go into the Wayback Machine to get this. Hey. this is like, Love I, the Wayback Machine. I had to like hack the system. You, just, the you circumvented the mainframe just then. Yeah. yeah. So. You know the Wayback Machine? I think that runs on Y2K. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it's the government version of Windows and Linux. Yeah. yeah. So I will say this guy's big on 33s. Mm. Uh, but he's like, like, you know, it's not me. It's them. Right. It's the Masons yeah. are big on 33s. I can't help it that they're so big on 33s. Which, to be fair... Is true. Yeah. He's also big Which on- I've also, sorry, just to butt in there on the Mason stuff. I think we've, have we just learned that that 33 Mason thing is actually an American thing that they've cooked up? And the uh, UK the, the Masons Scottish are annoyed. The Scottish original Masons it? are like, that's, that's bullshit. But they call it like the Scottish. Yeah. It's the Scottish Lodge in America, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think they've. You can't, you can't mention the name of the Lodge. They just call it the Scottish Lodge. But um, Macbeth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Try and pretend like you're making smarter references than you are. <laughs> uh, he's also very big on the number 19.5. All right. Uh, okay. Which, it's complicated. It's too complicated to get into, but 19.5 is significant. It's uh, tetrahedral. Mm. Uh, I think it relates to his physics system. All right. All right. So, I can... He also, he's got this idea about uh, the pyramids of Giza. Uh, are, uh, anything? No? Is that how Giza's pronounced? Yeah, yeah, I guess so, yeah. I feel like I pronounced it too much like with some Like some Giza. <laughs> Oi, build it in triangles, mate. <laughs> so, uh, he's got this idea, you know, like the, um, the meridian, which for in our system is, you know, goes around through England or whatever. Mm. He's got this idea that there's a Giza meridian instead. Triangles on the sides and a square on the bottom. <laughs> you're having a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so the Giza meridian goes through Giza. Uh, I think the Great Pyramid of Giza is supposed to be like a right bang on it. Right. right. Isn't just the meridian our construct of where time starts? Yeah, so this is also a construct. Yeah, right. Uh, but so you, didn't, like, you can't, oh, no, there's another one. Like, yeah, you say, if you just want to make your own thing, yes, you just put it there. Yeah. But then if he's like, this is just a, a construct, this is saying it's here, but then he's like, all of these things line up with it. You know, like, oh, you know how if you have a fucking line that goes around the world, it tends to line up with a couple of things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, his theory about uh, Giza is that uh, on the 31st of December, 1999, mm. at midnight exactly... Uh, would be the only time that Sirius, mm -hmm. the star, would be bang right in the middle of the sky bit. Yeah, lining up. Lining up perfectly on that meridian. And he thinks that's especially significant. He's like, this isn't, this isn't me. This is these cooked masons and their ideas, and these cooked Egyptian worshippers mm. and their ideas. But being bang in the middle, going from west to east, so travelling from... Uh, you know, death into life in like sort of ancient Egyptian mm. uh, idea of going from one world into the next. Mm. This is his thing. Yeah. <laughs> Which he says is their thing. Yeah. So he's like, that's bang on the middle and that's why they... You mean east to west? 
Yeah, whatever. Yeah. No, it's going from the sunrise in the east. Yeah. East, that's that's the birth, death is the sunset, right? That makes more sense, I think. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Okay. Anyway, he's like, it's, but it's bang on the meridian. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. bang right in the middle <clears throat> of the horizon or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and that's why they've sort of, they've set up, uh, this might also come into the idea, I saw a few things about uh, like, you know, the millennium wasn't really at the start of 2000. It's right. like, but they had to make it be at the start of 2000 so that all of this stuff would line up. Yeah. I also saw, in a, you know, I was reading an FBI report about uh, you know, the Y2K issue and like all of the different domestic terror groups that might try and take advantage of it. Mm. And it had a little fucking footnote at the start saying, well, as we know, the millennium actually starts on January 1st, uh, 2001. Yeah. But uh, that doesn't matter to these crazy people. Mm. I remember so, when- So mathematically speaking, that'd be wrong to attack now. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when this year started and everyone's like, yeah, the decade doesn't start until the start of next year. Yeah, no. Which I think is wrong. The yeah, numbers ticked wrong. over. Yeah. They changed. Yeah. Uh, this um, FBI report was called uh, Project Megiddo mm. after the hills on which apocalypse, the apocalypse is going to take place. Oh, yeah. And that is actually seized upon by these guys as like proof that it's, it's like Megiddo. Are they having a laugh? Yeah, probably. And it's like, well... In fairness, don't call your FBI project that. Mm. You're sort of just going to add fuel to the fire. <laughs> anyway, uh, in Egypt, on at the same time as Sirius, the star of Sirius is going to be in the middle of the thing, they were planning to put a capstone on top of the, the Grand Pyramid. Right. Finally finished it. A golden capstone. Well, this is the thing. There, there's some debate about whether pyramids need to have anything on the top mm. or if they can just have a nice flat bit. Mm. You know, you can put some seats on. Yeah, have a little rest at the top once you finish building it. Yeah. No. Dangle your little slave legs over there. Wouldn't that be shit house if you got to the top of the pyramid? And you're like, oh, so I've got to sit on this weird point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I guess to cling on to it. Yeah. With my fingers. No, so they're, they're going to put a golden capstone on the top. And uh, it got nixed. Because mm. uh, the Egyptian government was like, this is a little. Getting a little Masonic, mm. getting a little Jewy, maybe. Mm. Uh, their words, not mine. <laughs> yes, hard J out of nowhere. Uh, well, th- their words were: "This is a b- little bit Zionist, mm. a little bit Zio Masonic." Mm. This is a little bit world banker for me. Yeah. And so they um they nixed the capstone, and th- there was also going to be a an electronic music concert mm. from a French performer. What was his name? Jean Michel Jean. Jean Michel Jean. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a fan? Something? Yeah, big fan. Would you say that he's part of the Masonic Cabal? I'd say he's part of the fucking having a laser harp kick-ass stage show cabal. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Yeah, I know this guy. So the laser was- harp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've done this before. Yeah. He did perform on New Year's Eve in uh, Giza. Mm. Oh, what a show. That would have been good. Mm. And he did um, like project a bunch of sort of Masonic, Eye of Horus, blah, 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 sort of images, but... Didn't really come off because it was too foggy. Yeah. I wonder what the psychedelic situation is in Egypt. Because, mm. like, oh, man, I'm going to be at the pyramids. I'm going to be seeing sick laser harps from Jean-Michel Jarre. I really want to smash down some mushies or some LSDs. And, like, but I'm in Egypt. Do they have, if you know, if you can get hooked up on <laughs> mushies or LSD in Egypt, just just let us know. I don't, I don't know if it was like a huge party atmosphere because there was – the concert almost got shut down as well because they're like, the government was like, is they going to be drinking at this? This sounds like something where people might like a little tipple mm. and we're not huge fans of that. Mm. So they had to come out and promise, no, there'll be no alcohol served. That's why even more cars. reason to smash down some mushies. Um, and then you can go get KFC afterwards, the KFC that you can see the pyramids from. <laughs> but uh, Michael Barra and Richard Hoagland have an alternate theory or they have more information about why the capstone... Was next. And that oh, is- can I just say one thing about the concert? Yes. Um, so that was the one that Pink Floyd was mooted to play at as a big secret thing. And I remember it being a complete, like, Pink Floyd are playing at the Pyramids in 2000. It's going to be the best concert. Mm. Um, and it was just this rumour that just wouldn't go away, but it was never never true. Never They never said they were or would. And people were even like, well, they say they won't, but I think they're going to at midnight. <laughs> they, they didn't. Anyway, sorry. That would have been sick though, right? Mm. Yeah, on all, the, on all the mushes you've just taken. So... Then the other reason the capstone may have been cancelled, according to these guys, 
is because of the crash of Egypt Air Flight 990, mm-hmm. which happened in uh, November, uh, just before they cancelled, the, they nixed the capstone thing. And so their theory is that there was something on the plane that uh, caused them to have to cancel it, like they had some special bit for the capstone that was going to uh, really uh, bring home... Amplify the, the rituals. Have you heard of this plane crash before? No. This is like... This was a controversial plane crash. Mm. Uh, So it went down in November of 1999 and there was a huge kerfuffle between the Americans and the Egyptians over what had happened. It went down in international waters like near America Mm. and the Egyptians like ceded. You know, they couldn't afford to get over there and investigate this. So they're like, they let the... uh, the US do it, but they wouldn't let the FBI do it. Mm. So the um, the American flight people looked into it, and it was clearly uh, brought down on purpose. Mm. There was on the uh, the black box, you can hear the guy who's the only guy who's in the cockpit saying the pilot. Yeah, well, he was like the assistant pilot, mm. the real, the actual pilot. Co-pilot. Yeah. Mm. Well, he was. They had a bunch of pilots on this plane. It was pilot adjacent. Right. Too many pilots spoil the broth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you'll find out they, they actually did have too many pilots at one point in this. Right. Uh. But there was a bunch of pilots on the plane and this guy was like the assistant right. pilot. He was supposed to like take over like later on in the flight, for like 20 minutes. And he's like, oh, I can take over. And the, uh, the guy who was taking over was like, no, that's cool. I got it. You know, we are living in 1999. The plane basically flies itself. Mm. Uh so it's cool, actually. And he's like really insisted that he could take over. Anyway, he takes over. Eventually, he's the only one in the cockpit because the other pilot's gone to take a leak. Mm. And uh, he's heard on the black box saying, oh, you know, something like, you know, my life belongs to God or whatever. And then a minute later, he flicks off the autopilot mm. and whoosh, jams on the, uh, on the stick. It's awful. Which causes the plane to go into a zero G situation. Mm hmm. The real pilot somehow manages to float his way back into the cockpit. Surrounded by his floating piss. <laughs> <laughs> I, should, uh, I should have been writing with his pencil the whole time. Yeah. He, That's right, because if the droplets of piss get on all the paper, the yeah. space pen will write straight through yeah. it. <laughs> the real pilot gets back and he's like, what are you, what's going on in here? And he manages to sort of get back control of the plane. But then they have this situation where they're like, He's like, pull up, pull up, and he's pulling up. And they're like, according to all of the instruments, the other pilot was actually pulling down. Ah. And then the plane crashes. Uh, so the Americans... Sorry for joking about also... You can cut some of the uh, yeah, yeah. if you like. <laughs> so the Americans concluded, oh, this is like a suicide by pilot. Mm. Uh, but the Egyptians were like, no, it was a bit of a political thing. They're like, no, maybe it was like a, a malfunction. Mm. I don't know why it was such a big thing, but there were 33 Egyptian military officials on the plane. Mm. Mm. There's actually, would you like some more 33s out of this? Oh, yeah. I live for 33s. We're going to have some good 33 gear on the news as well. Stay tuned for that. Nice. Patrons. Is that PK related? PK. So firstly, I will explain what 19.5 is because there, there might be a couple of 19.5s in here. Okay. Uh, 19.5, which is actually rounded from 19.471. Uh is the expression of the circumscription of a tetrahedron by a sphere, which, as you would know, is the key to understanding Richard Hoagland's hyperdimensional physics. Mm, yeah. I did know that. Yeah. So, Who doesn't know that? Yeah. Now you know what 19.5 is. All right. Here's some numbers for you. Tell me if you think this is a coincidence or if you think the Masons are just having an absolute fucking laugh. All right. All right. An Egyptian plane that has got 33,000 flight hours. How many thousand? 33. Yeah. Spending 90- oh, Are we doing a call and response thing? Yeah, no. we, should, we should do it like that though. All right. After spending- Do it again. Okay. An Egyptian plane with 33,000 flight hours. How many thousands is that? 33. 33. After spending 19.5 hours in the US. And what's the uh, circumscription of a tetrahedron through a sphere? 19.5. Well, approximately. Rounded from 19.47. Uh, <laughs> how many passengers do you think were on the previous leg of this plane's trip? 33. 33. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? That was a fairly empty plane. Yeah. yeah. How much leg room would you have on that plane? Fucking stacks. 30, 19.5 inches. <laughs> uh, That's not a problem. They, they, don't, they don't adjust the seats around. No, you but think they only put 33 seats on if there's only 33. No, but you can... You can stick your leg out to stick the side. Out. Yeah. yeah, all right. 
Uh, Does Isle still need to be free? How many Egyptian military officers were on this plane? 33. 33. Uh, It'd be weird if it was 19.5. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, How many feet up in the air do you reckon they were when uh, the trouble started? 33,000. Correct. Didn't you say that at the start? Uh, No, I never said that. It was another one. Uh. But I thought you could probably guess it if I was asking you. Mm. Uh, No, he did say that at the start. It was something 33,000 how long after takeoff do you reckon? No, I said about the military officer before. How, how long after takeoff do you think that uh, <laughs> no. this all went down? Uh, 33 minutes. Correct. A Monday. Uh, and what do you reckon was happening in New York at the time? Apparently, heaps of Egyptian shit. There was like something at the museum. I don't right. know. Seems like a little bit of a stretch to me. He's like, there's so much Egyptian stuff happening in New York at the time. I feel like at any given time, there's Egyptian stuff happening around the world. Mm. Yeah. Um, Walk Like an Egyptian was a pretty popular song that happened. Yep. The Mummy was a popular movie. Yep. Others. Have you watched the reboot of The Mummy? No. Put it on about 10 minutes in. I was like, nah. Where's, where's nah. my buddy Phrase? Yeah. Uh, what uh, comet was happened to be passing through the Western Death Horizon, representing the spiritual evolution of the moment of death at the time? The Comet Enki, also known as the Taurus Meteor Stream Set. Set, of course, being the Egyptian version of Satan. Uh, guess... <laughs> Hang on. I like that the Egyptian version of Satan. Yeah. In the background. <laughs> um, that particular comet, with the shortest period of any comet known, follows a highly elliptical path around the sun, as all other comets do. Yeah. Only this one, the one for whom the official JPL comet website is named, has a period of how many years? 3.3. Sorry, you wouldn't have guessed yeah. that. Well, what if you take the... Uh, this one will point out of 3.3. What do you get? 33. Yeah. You can play this at home as well. Yeah. What? What's the What's the year thing for Halley's Comet? It's like 40 or 80 or something? 70? Oh, I thought it was 33. Nah. I thought it might have been 33. It's pretty high. Even more unbelievable, the perihelion distance of the closest approach to the sun is 0.33 of the Earth's distance or 33 million miles. Wait, what? 0.33 of the Earth's distance to the sun. the sun. And that's also 33 million miles. Yeah. Which I don't understand. Uh, I don't believe it. So the implications of these additional comet coincidences added to the already impossible string of 19.5s and 33s associated with the flood itself prove that the Masonics were mucking around. Ah. Oh. Here's the thing about this capstone, though. Mm. There was... Some weirdness about it. So uh, the guy that was pushing this was a guy called Zahi Hawass. Mm. He was like, I don't know if he was at the time, but he was the he ended up being in the Egyptian minister for pyramids or whatever, the archaeological minister, mm. uh, which I, I guess when you got a bunch of archaeological stuff, you need a minister for it. He did end up going to jail. I guess Egypt's been through a bit. Mm. He, he went to jail for like a year quite recently. I think he'd fallen out of favour uh, with the new government. Mm. But uh, at the time of this, he was quite in favour, but he was he was in charge of this capstone project. And there's this thing on this guy's website where he suggests that uh, he was working with the Association for Research and Enlightenment, which is a group which is dedicated to the prophecies of American psychic Edgar Case. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> And the weird thing is he did have an association with this group and Edgar Case had a prediction about a capstone being put on the Pyramid of Giza and that that would, this is like back in the 40s he predicted, they'll they'll put a capstone on Giza and that will usher in a new world order. Mm. And so they propose on this thing that uh, this association that is dedicated to like this psychic's predictions uh, paid for like this m- Egyptian minister's PhD. I right. think they might have <laughs> in order to fulfill the prophecy. Well, this so is like speak. this is like his. He's now repaying them for this. He's helping them fulfill this yeah. prophecy of the case, which seems to me like a little bit of a prophecy cheat. Yeah, that's not how. That's not how it should work. <laughs> <You're not> so- <laughs> it's technically okay. Yes, if it had gone through. Yeah. Technically okay. Yeah, he was right. Technically. You're but not supposed to do it yourself. You can't. You can't call it. It's not like a a pool game where you're like corner pocket and then you hit it in the corner pocket. Ah, <laughs> I'm psychic. Yeah, it's not how that works. 
So yeah, that was that was interesting. Um, there was also there was I saw there was some controversies about this Zahi guy because he like controlled all access to the pyramids, mm. and he had fairly close maybe monetary relationship with uh, like National Geographic, and so they would do all of these docos when mm. no one else could get access. Ah, Nat Geo though, who are you letting in? That's not if you're not if you're letting in Nat Geo, no one else. Yeah, but th- they. So there was this idea that a new world order was going to be ushered in by putting a capstone on this thing. And the people who were behind that idea were pretty closely connected to it getting put on. Mm. So Interesting. You know what they could have done with that capstone? Mm. Instead of making it a big solid stone, just give it a about a 10-foot riser, make it hollow inside, sneaky little escalator up the side of the pyramid... You got a bloody nice little shelter and lookout up there. Mm. Chuck in a Starbucks. Get a Starbucks. Yeah. Uh, I, I climbed, should I should be allowed to climb the pyramid if I want to. I climbed up a, a hill slash I guess it's a mountain. No, it's probably a hill in the middle of um Seoul in Korea once. Yeah. And I, I walked up the gardeny way and it was quite a height, quite an intense sort of, you know, yeah. thing. And I got to the top and like there's also a, a gondola that goes up there, and at the top it's just like a huge like it's like four or five shops, big giant teddy bears being sold, yeah. families running around. <laughs> I got up and just like so tired. It was hot. I was like, oh, it was awful. I'm like, what is, where, where is I was expecting this kind of peaceful view. Yeah. Uh, so I got a tiramisu and a beer and it was delicious. Nice. Lovely. <laughs> yeah. And then did you just catch the thing back down? Uh, did I get the gondola? I must have. Yeah. yeah. I hiked up mega amounts of stairs in Paris. Yeah. Getting to Montmartre. Yeah. And then realised there was a funicular like yeah. 50 metres down the road that would have just taken me up there. So my suge- I, I'm on board with your pyramid suggestion. I would also add tiramisu and beer okay. to the top. Delicious mm. combination on a hot day. That's my take. Nice. So yeah. That's, uh, that's the Giza capstone New Year's Eve controversy. Yeah. Anything else on Y2K? So weren't, there, weren't people saying that 2020 was actually going to be when everything fucked up? 2020 yes. and then 2031? Uh, 2038. So there's, 2038? There's a few things. So, like, we talked about how the Russians just turned their clocks back, mm. like those fucking dumb Russians. So a bunch of what the Americans did was, and I guess this is because they, they were sort of, a bunch of people were doing it on the cheap. Mm. They're just like, why don't we just change it? So it's like in 2020 it needs to be updated and we don't have to worry about it now. We don't have to update everything. We will just change one little thing that everything refers to. Mm -hmm. So that a bunch of people just push the problem back. And it's not just 2020. That's, I think some of the first ones are happening in 2020. Mm. There's been a few things where like, I I think there was a ticketing system on the buses or something in Sydney that went a bit skew if the other day. Mm. I had a thing happen. What did you have happen? As when the new year clicked over to 2020, the building that I live in, we have like a car park fob mm. that lets you into the car park. Everyone in the building's car park fob expired. Wow. <laughs> and that, that I had to get reprogrammed and set up again. That's a pain in the ass. Yeah. So did they just have to leave it open for a few days? Uh, every, well, every time I went up to the little thing, I just rang the company that does, there's an intercom. Yeah. I went, hit the intercom. When they were like, hello, I was like, I'm a resident, let me in. Right. And they just opened the boom gates for me. Pro tip, if you come to... There's a little hack. That building, you want to do some shopping? Just go, awesome. I'm a resident. Doing, Can little, I hear? Uh, a little life hack. Can you let me in? So over the next few years, it's going to be more of that happening because, I I mean, you're, you're lazy programmers like, oh, 2020, but like your smart lazy programmers like, oh, 2026, that'll be fine. Mm. I think rationale was that by 2020, systems and computers that we're using in 2000 aren't going to be around anymore. Yeah, which, which was it- sort of stupid because that was the rationale that caused the problem in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like in the seventies, they're like, "Well, they'll have updated all of this by the year 2000. Yeah. They didn't realize that in twenty twenty two thousand was only like five years ago. <laughs> We're all still doing the same things. So the other big one that's coming up is twenty thirty eight. Mm. So on some specific day in January twenty thirty eight, uh, it's going to be for any system that's like a thirty two bit system. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they count dates by how many seconds it is from the 1st of January 1970. It's like the, the number. Unix time. Yeah. And on this date in January 2038, they're going to hit the end of that, that number like as big as it can get. Right. And then it's like, if they haven't fixed that, a bunch of shit's going to go down. And like a lot of computer, I don't think they're doing 32-bit computers anymore. 
I wouldn't think so. Everything's 64. Depends what company you work for, probably. Mm. Bit now. But, no, but I mean, in terms of new computers, oh, yeah. everything's 64 bit now. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to go out and buy one. But this, again, it's this thing where there's a lot of stuff running on old systems. Mm. And once again, we'll be like, oh, no, in 2038, we'll have upgraded that by now. Yeah. And we won't have. Uh, cool. So, yeah, my conclusion was that they did spend a lot of time and money fixing it. And that's why nothing happened. And that's what all of the these nerds say. It's like, we, we fixed it. And, you know, if we fix it, we look like idiots when nothing goes wrong. Um, I feel like enough went wrong that they could point to that stuff and be like, see? That guy, that bloke owns 90K in rentals. Yeah. Imagine um, if that had happened to a, if some guy owed 90K in rentals to a nuclear power station that blew up. I um, was watching... What? <laughs> I was watching... Um, I, there was a video of the New Zealand News right on midnight. So they were like broadcasting live because New Zealand was sort of the first big country um, or country to, to get them, get Y2K, uh, the time tick over. And like one of the reporters went and got some cash out. Oh, everyone's working. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like the whole world was like, all right, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen in New Zealand first. Mm. Uh, and nothing happened. Yeah. Just big mad old Kev was in the middle of the road. Big Russ. Big Russ. Potato top pie, delightful after a night of drinking. Still thinking about that potato top pie yeah. 20 years after the fact. Oh, I did find one funny little bit of scepticism that I thought was good. In that FBI report, they looked at all of these different domestic terror groups. And uh, one of them was... Uh, William Pierce of the National Alliance, which is a neo-Nazi group. Mm. So all of these other Nazi groups are like, oh, it's going to be back in the end times. Get your guns ready. Race war is going to kick off. Uh, William Pierce was like, nah, don't worry about it. Uh, the main risk is that all of the crazy people will go berserk when uh, like the second coming doesn't happen. Mm. And also that other right-wing nuts might launch a, uh, an attack on the government. Mm. A premature attack was the way he put it. Suggesting there is a time to launch an attack. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> not, just not this one. But uh, his point was the computer professionals and the government have been like putting the time in to fix this. So it's going to be fine. Hmm. So even the Nazis, some of the Nazis. There's a moment of clarity from the Nazis. Yeah. P.S. I still hate other races. Yeah. And there, Irrationally. Will, there will be a time to attack the government. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that actually went a bit longer than we planned because I guess it was... Uh, a major event of our epoch. Yeah. And you weren't expecting that to be so much capstone gear. No, who expected that capstone gear? Yeah. Not me. Well, it's been scrubbed from the internet. You can't get that capstone gear anywhere but Hypothopod. Mm. Or the Wayback Machine. Yeah. But we yeah. won't tell you how to what to search for. Um, so we mentioned at the top of the show we were going to be doing some Gippsland Panth mm-hmm. gear, but I think we've decided to push that back. Yeah, next week. Stay tuned. If you've got any good uh, big cat stories... Um, if you've got a story about the Lithgow Leaper, um, <laughs> any, any rockers from the 70s out there, yeah. uh, sli- slide into our DMs or send us an at. Mm. Uh, where can people find us? Hypothopod on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on Spotify. We're on Patreon. We're on Patreon. Of Thank you to all of our patrons. Mm. Especially. You're all going to get something. Oh, sorry. Go on. You're all going to get something uh, fun in the mail. So if you're not on our Patreon... You should jump on our Patreon because we now and then send out fun little things. Mm, this is the first fun thing for a while and it's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. There's envelopes. Yeah. They've got addresses on them. Yeah. They're ready to get put in the mail. Yes. Yeah. And especially thanks to Tammy, our cooked mega patron. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Uh, Robo, where, do, where can they find you? You can get me at Ale of a Time, uh, aleofatime.com. Yeah, that's about it, really. You can Salts. get me at Salt Marsh on Twitter and Instagram. Andrew so much illustration on Facebook and check out Toyota on Patreon. You can get me at Sex Timer on Twitter. My other podcast is Gathered Around Me. My radio show, Yeah, Nah, Passaran, is on 3CR Thursdays at 4.30pm. 3CR. Yeah. Tune in. Thanks, Roy. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Don't worry about a thing. Except if all our world leaders are alien reptilians I said don't worry about a thing Except maybe the fluoride in our water supply contains mind-altering drugs Don't worry about a thing
accept whether or not Port Arthur was a false flag operation in which to disarm Australia. I said, don't worry about a thing. I accept. You can definitely hear John Lennon say, I buried Paul at the end of Strawberry Fields forever. Ooh, don't worry about a thing. Except not only did Bush do 9 11, but he also keeps the plane down in Area 51, which let's not forget where all of the aliens are. Don't worry about a thing. Except Donald Trump is clearly a 